Hey everyone, Nick Mace Plays here. Today I'm going to go over my Sea Monster deck, also known as Deep. This deck is centered on Nautilus and self milling, which means putting cards from your own deck to the graveyard to get to 15 less cards in your deck. In Runeterra, um, if you get to 15 or card less cards in your deck, you have to be deep, which means certain creatures that have the deep keyword become plus three plus three. So you want to get yourself milled down 15 cards, and then all your Sea Monsters, which are the ones that have deep, get stronger. But I'll go right into the deck and explain the card choice and why. First card is Dredge Dredgers. It's a one drop. When I'm summoned, toss three. Toss means um, you send cards from the bottom of your deck to the graveyard. So when you summon, you send the bottom three cards of your deck to the graveyard to start getting yourself closer to 15 cards or less in your deck. Pretty straightforward one drop. It's the perfect card for this deck. It's a one drop that see on turn one, you can immediately start doing your strategy, which is to get yourself 15 or less to get all your abilities. And also, it's a blocker for one. Three Jettison, this card's amazing. Uh, I've always thought this card would be insanely good when I first saw it. A lot of people thought this card wouldn't be good when it was first announced because it's a, a blank card. Like, you're using a card, it doesn't actually get you card advantage. Like, you just lose a card in your hand, so you're down a card to work with. But this card for one mana lets you toss four, which is it's exactly what the deck wants to do, is to toss. So you definitely want three Jettison. Um, it's extremely important against control matchups because in control matchups, the goal to beat what they're trying to do with uh, their strategy is to get deep as fast as possible. Against like a more aggressive deck, you won't really have time to just use Jettison straight up because you'll have to deal with their pressure and get deep over time because you have to focus on not dying more so than going deep. Versus control, there's going to be a lot of passing and you guys aren't really going to be like pressuring each other too much. You want to be doing your strategy as fast as you can before they can. It's also really good in the mirror because whoever goes first in the, the sea monster versus sea monster matchup, whoever goes deep first usually wins. Yeah, this card just perfect. Um, if you have, you can burst for four. Like if you think about it, this is four turns. This is four rounds in the game. You get to go deep earlier. Even just one of them. A lot of times, if you don't have any other means to go deep, and you just have Sea Monster hand, this is a whole four turns earlier to do that. And um, I just think it's really important. So yeah, this card's great. Uh, you can burst. You have two. You can burst for eight, milling eight cards. That's that's so uh, close to getting deep. All right. So the next card is a two drop Thorn Toad. Last breath, so when it dies, toss two and heal the Nexus two. Pretty straightforward card. It's not the greatest versus control, but it's really good versus aggro decks because you get to block a lot of their one defense creatures with a one four and it lives, so it can block multiple times. And then it helps you heal and toss, so it's pretty well rounded. Um, it has its ups and downs again, like against also versus elusive. It's not that helpful, but there are ways to to make it worthwhile. Next card is Vile Feast. This is just a generically good card that's good for healing, stalling, all kinds of stuff. So you just want to have this card because it, without it, it's really easy to get overwhelmed at the, the beginning of the game. You want to use this, even mid-range decks have a lot like Icefall Archer and Fleet Tracker. You can use this on the, the one defense creatures. So not only does it kill the creature, heal one, but it also gives a blocker. It's just a really generic card that's good. Without it, you're going to have a lot more trouble in the early game. So this helps you get by. Next card, amazing Deadly Wonder. When I'm summoned, toss three. Um, when you have life, it has life steal, so it helps you heal, helps you get to late game, but it also um, it tosses. A lot of the late game, people can put a lot of pressure on you, so these heal cards help out a lot. Next card is Jaw Hunters. This card's phenomenal. Uh, three drop, four one. When I'm summoned, create a Ram Sea Monster in your hands, Challenger. So you just play it and you get rid of, remove one of the threats or what, something that's pressuring you, and you get a Sea Monster in your hand. So next card is Lord of the Death. This is a card that a lot of people think is good, a lot of people think is bad in this deck. Um, I think it honestly is a good card, but it depends on the meta. I don't think it's just black and white, it's a good or bad card. I think it's it really comes down to what the meta is like. There are times where you won't be able to play... There are metas where you won't be able to play Lure, because you'll be pressured too heavily. And you just won't be able to really justify spending 3 mana to, in a way, do nothing immediately. Because when you first... First, I'll just read the card. Reduce cost of sea monster, allies everywhere by one, draw a sea monster. So basically it makes all your sea monsters in your deck, which we're about to get to, cost one less for the rest of the game. Uh, it gives you a sea monster, but the downside is you're wasting three mana, wasting three mana to do nothing. You're using three mana to do nothing initially. Which, uh, you can't really justify a lot of metas, but I think that you need this right now to make your sea monsters discounted. I feel like a lot of the time you have Abyssal Eyes and your sea monsters are pretty costly and you're, you can't play them because they cost too much, so... I think having the one less really makes the difference in terms of making your deck more proactive. Otherwise, it's a lot of stalling and passing, which you can have a more heal-centric with Withering Whale's version of this deck, 
but if you do, it's the cost of certain matchups become even worse, where this is a more well-rounded option. I've always been a fan of this card, honestly. I think it's underrated. I do see the, the concerns with it, but uh, I think I think it'd be better to show you guys in play um, how, how it plays out, because there's many turns where you need these all to cost like one less for them to be truly good, and again, it's against control and mid-range, this is pretty good, so... Um, we'll get into it later. All right, let's go Maokai. Right, this is one of the best cards in the whole deck. This this card is phenomenal. I think people know this card's really good in this deck, but I think it's just underrated just how good it is. A lot of people run Thresh. I really wouldn't recommend that because it's an expensive cutting on Maokai, and this card is way too good. All right, so I first saw this card. I didn't really think that that much. I was like, you know, it's pretty good. Toss to summon a sapling, but it costs four if you'll turn. I don't know if like, you'd already be kind of behind the early game of this deck because you don't have uh, the early game pressure like other decks have. But this card's this is one of the best cards in the whole deck. Like this card frequently mills six plus. So every each round, first you play an ally, toss two, someone a sapling, sapling's two on challenger. If you can get him on the board and just just stick him on the board for like one turn, then you're gonna get you're gonna be able to toss two and you get a blocker. This can be on their turn it's a blocker, and your turn it's a challenger that removes their threats. So it's basically if it's basically if you play Malkai and they can't clear it, you're gonna win. You're sure gonna win. There are many ways to clear it, but some of them go even. Like if they use Thermoject Beam on this for four mana. That's, I mean, they traded four mana for four mana. It's not the end of the world. And um, if they if they kill it in favorable ways, like if they have a challenger unit or something, and they buff it, or that, it sounds a bit obscure, but some people do run. This is a bit, this is not a common example, but like stuff like Sonic Wave and uh, you know War Chefs can buff stuff. There's just plenty of ways to deal with card. And if you don't get value out of it, yeah, it is bad. But this deck's this card's way too powerful to not run three of. Like especially in the mirror. I feel like you need Maokai or you're going to lose if they have Maokai. A lot of games come down to, oh, if I have Maokai, I'm going to win straight up. And on top of that, it has an alter it's also how you beat control decks, or a lot of different variants of control decks. So when your units have died or your card's been tossed 25 times, they need to level them up. When you level them up, he obliterates, which means completely removed from the game. They're just gone, doesn't activate any of the last breath effects, can't be revived, just removes them. You leave the enemy deck with four non-champion cards. So... Since they're non-champion cards, that means that unless they already have two of the same champion in hand, they can't use champion spells to to reshuffle uh, the cards in their deck. We can use champion spells to set shuffle them out in your deck, whatever the champion they have is. They can't refuel their deck, so basically it gives them four turns until they duck out and they lose. Um, it's, you're gonna, a lot of games, uh, especially against like Karma Ezreal is a harder matchup, you're going to need to try and mill as fast as possible and activate this effect early before they can get themselves going. And then they'll, they'll have nothing to win with. So it's an ultimate win condition. It, it's probably one of the most contributing to tossing in your whole deck if it sticks. Clears their field. It's, it's basically they don't answer this immediately. Then you get to control the whole game. And then it's also a win condition. So it's it's pretty phenomenal. The only downside is that it's 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 champ spell. Malkai stat match isn't the greatest. Toss three, allies three. Doesn't count for your nexus. But there are turns you do, you do play anyway. But anyways, two salvage. Um, you don't want to run three because it is expensive. So if you ever draw two, you'll pretty much not ever really have time to play both. I feel most of the time, especially against mid range and aggro decks. And it says th it says three, seven, three, but I'm only running two. And uh, you don't want to draw into another. This is this isn't really a thing that comes up this much in the game. It's more of other card games. But you don't want to draw into another salvage off salvage, or you're not really drawing a card of substance. From, you're spending four minutes just to draw and toss two, and then you're not, really, you're not really drawing a card of substance to make up for uh, the tempo you left behind to do this. But again, very good control matchups, good in the mirror. Drawing is the same as tossing in a way because it takes two cards out of your deck, so you're closer to the only having 15 cards in your deck to activate deep. So I think the card's really good right now. I actually prefer this deck to be a more in engine, you know, relying on lure and salvage to do your own strategy rather than countering the meta and having like. Withering Whales and Runations and all kinds of things. You can do those, but they're only... It's at the trade-off that all those cards are only good in certain matchups. Like, there are certain matchups where Withering Whale's good, certain ones really bad. Certain ones where Originates is good, certain ones where it's really bad. So, being able to rely on yourself is more rewarding. Um, there's a problem is that it can't beat... Like, a lot of, it, there's a reason those cards are played, because it can't beat a lot of these other strategies. They get overwhelmed. But I, I actually do think, even though you do spend 3 mana on this, this helps a lot by making it so for the rest of the game, all your cards cost less. But let's go to the first sea monster. We got Abyssal Eye. This one comes... In, at first, I wasn't thinking this is the greatest one, but it's really good in this format because you, you just need it to be elusives. It, it is cool that it draws, but it's pretty understated. But you definitely need to be elusives, and 
When it costs four, it's with the lure of the death. It's really convenient because you can play it. So we'll get the Nautilus, and I'll explain that when I get there, I suppose. But it'll it'll come in later. But basically, elusive, you know, can't be blocked one by elusive unit. Deep. So this is the whole this is the whole point of the deck is getting deep for this analysis effect. Um, when you have fifteen cards of fear in your deck, plus three plus three. So when Trex draw a card, it's pretty understated, but it's it's good. It's good for the role it plays, uh, blocking elusives and being able to draw cards and. Kind of getting you, getting you to um, stabilize. It, it it's a format dependent thing. I actually I actually think that this deck has much potential to be very very different depending on the format. I know a lot of people think that this deck has like a certain cards that have to be in it or like it's set it's set a lot of cards, but I really don't think so. I think that only a few cards are needed, like Nautilus and Devourer, like everything else. Or mo most, I mean, Jaw is pretty good, but a lot of cards, uh, but a lot of cards are, are changeable based on the format. There's there's plenty of lists in this that differ like ten cards. So I think depending on the, how the meta develops in the future and the more D cards we get, you're gonna see many different shades of this deck. But I'll go over some cards I didn't play later in Wipe. Anyways, yeah, good card. I'll explain more about it with the Nautilus, Grass of the Undying, Drain Three from any unit. So you do need some form of heal slash removal. This deck is not. You need you need some defense. It's it takes a while to get going. It's not really like a deck where you just are like controlling the field from turn one. Uh, the reason I chose Grasp is that I don't think Withering Whale is that great this format, especially because Crimson Disciples in a lot of the aggressive decks that are doing the early game pressure and this doesn't do anything. This is like Withering Whale. Withering Whale. Um, say Withering Whale. Withering Whale activates Crimson Disciples' ability. Deal one to all enemies here next to three, and then Crimson. Disciple, okay. Crimson Disciple. When I start out damage, deal two. It reduces one to it, and then they they do two damage. You only heal one, and it doesn't even kill the units. This is better against mid range decks that have more defense, and just in general, you can also use this on your own cards. Like I know Whale is good because you heal through no matter what, but you can grasp the Undying. Like if you block with this once, you get three. You can grasp the Undying your own card, which actually comes up a lot um, to heal five because you get the, the three from Grasp and two from this. Um, many matchups, especially against like elusive and stuff, try and stop you from being able to. Like, if you were to grasp their own card, they can use fervor, Noxian fervor, to uh, dodge it, or they could just negate it or heal and or buff buff its defenses and die and do more damage anyway. So, I think grasp is, is actually good because it removes the card for the most part. Three units, uh, three damage for the unit. Anyways, the deck, one of the best cards in the deck. I think it's also one of the coolest cards. Command these guys, card is so sick. Play obliterate any enemy with less health than me, so it's a four four. So it has to be they have to be three or less health. It can't be equal. But obliterate just removes it from play completely. There's not really under many effects in this game that even do the obliterate uh, ability. But the cool thing here is this is a, a plus one in terms of card advantage. If it resolves, uh, you just play it and then it removes their cards, so you, you didn't lose anything, but they lost one of their cards, so you get a plus one net because they lose a card, you lose nothing. Which sounds so straightforward, but like. You gotta keep in mind how many cards in this game actually do this. Like, it's almost none. Not many cards you just play and then just remove something. So, it's really good. And with Deep, comes a 7 7, which means you can remove anything 6 or less health. Um, with Lord of the Death, becomes, if you do that early, it's, you place on 5, which lets you regain, or lets you control the mid, mid game and regain uh, field control really, really, really easily. And then next, Nautilus this is pretty much like the key part of the deck. When I level up, so he's a 0 12 with Tough and Fearsome. When I level up, Copy tossed allies that cost four plus in your deck. So this is actually an effect that people talk about, but it's very important. Uh, everyone does it because it's just by default. You, it activates when you when you level up. But it's something to note that whenever you're milling yourself, like you're you're sending cards to the graveyard by tossing, and you toss the um, the abyssal eye and four plus it's called, yeah the abyssal eye and the devourer and shiver quarter get there later. It shuffles them back into your deck. Which means that now when you when you get this ability, when he levels up, your deck is going to mostly be composed of strong sea monsters that all get a deep effect. So basically just, it fuels your deck with cards you'd want to draw for the remainder of the game. And then, so when he's leveled up, he was a 13-13 with Fearsome Tough. And sea monster allies cost four less. This is huge, because it, if you can stick them in the field, this biggest weakness is Will of Ionia. Vengeance too, but mo it's most commonly Will of Ionia. Um, but if he sticks then you get this discount for the rest of the game and that's just so much pressure to be playing these for these for three and you know these for two but if you have the lure of the deaths this actually costs zero because it'll cost four and then be discounted for so you can play nautilus and if you love the deaths you can place the same turn you play nautilus 
and you can put a lot of pressure on. So that's really convenient, even if, especially if you have multiples and it works out that way. And then the last thing, this is probably the best chance spell in the game, Nautilus' Riptide. Stun an enemy, so it's actually not that good of a card. Like, without, without Nautilus' cards, it's pretty, pretty average. Not, not really that good. Uh, not really that great. It's just stun an enemy for four. It's, it's, yeah, it's expensive, it's not really doing much. But, shuffle that unit into the deck if you have a Nautilus. So it becomes a four cost fast spell shuffle anything creature into the deck, any unit into the deck, any unit in the deck. Uh, that's insane. That's one of the best cards in the entire game. But the reason it's the best chance spell in the game is that since it's Nautilus's Riptide, which means it only it becomes this in your hand when you have an Nautilus in the field, uh, you always will be doing the, the shuffle effect, the shuffle into the deck effect, which makes it the best chance spell in the game because it just becomes a four, a four mana shuffling the deck at all times, because it's the, the champ spell. So that's really good. Ship Recorder. This card's uh, very interesting. A lot of people do play one or zero, but I'll explain why I play it. So this card gives you a win condition beyond what you normally have. This deck can frequently run out of cards if you put in scenarios where it can't, it can't win. But as long as you have this sea creature, you can always win a late game with Treasure Trove. Create five random cards in hand. They cost zero and are fleeting. If I'm tossed, draw me instead. In this card, if I'm tossed, draw me instead, summon three vicious play orm eggs, and these become fearsome eight eights with deep. So basically this card says, so you don't so it puts these treasures in your deck. When you summon, you, you mill two, and you put two treasures into your deck. And then if if you draw them or mill them, they go to your hand. So basically, what happens is that when this card's summoned, it also tosses two. So if you're about to be deep, let's say you're at uh, 16 cards in your deck. If you summon it, or let's say 17, 17 cards in your deck, you summon it, it makes you go deep. Even though it puts two cards back in your deck, you still stay deep. So it lets you go deep actually like a turn earlier than most, with literally only cost six, which is good. And then when it's shuffled back in your deck through Nihilus Effect, you don't have many cards left in your deck. So it's much easier to mill or draw these cards, especially if you have a Jettison. This makes your Jettison's not dead late game. A lot of times you'll have the Jettison, you'll draw it later in the game or just have it when you're already deep and it doesn't do anything. It's just a blank card in your hand. But if you play Ship Recorder, then it lets you get, you, let you, you Jettison for the treasures and you can get these treasures. I feel like this adds an extra element to the deck that without it, your deck is a lot weaker. It's, it's a whole other, literally a whole other dimension to the deck. It's a whole other win condition, it's a whole other out, it helps all these matchups. A lot of people say, oh, well, I don't want to play that because it's, uh, it's too expensive or something, or maybe unreliable, but I think you should at least play one no matter what, because the, the, it's such a minimal, like playing one is such a minimal thing to add this much of Ellen to your deck. Like the individual cards aren't that great. Or I think this card's actually decent, honestly. It's a 10 with deep for seven. But besides that, let's say this card was, was not that great or people think that. The, what it adds to your deck as a whole, aside from the individual card, is much, much stronger. It makes your deck much, much stronger with it. And it'd be a lot weaker without having this just a single element it adds off of one copy of a card. Uh, it's kind of like, in a way, like Quinn in Scouts. Like I know this is a very weird example, but Quinn as herself as a card is pretty average, you know, not like the strongest card. But what she adds to your deck, the whole like uh, Valor combos with Misfortune and gets the scouts with Misfortune and she levels up when you've attacked four times. It's like the individual card's not that strong, but what, the, what it adds to your deck as a concept or the strength adds to your decks makes your deck so much overall stronger than a deck without it. Even though it's individual as a card, it's not that great. This is something I had to learn through playing card games for a while. Um, I've been going on it for a while, but basically there is a card in Old School Yu-Gi-Oh that was um, agreed upon to be like, some people thought weren't that great, and then it was just a beat, a beat down card. It just had uh, good stats. I won't go this too long. It had good stats, and the individual card didn't seem that great, really, if you just look at it. But the element it adds to your deck by having a, a beat down card, like a beat beater, it was called, card in your deck, to attack over monsters is really significant because without that in your deck, you had no way to just clear these monsters that were pressuring you. So you needed a, a beater to beat things. The individual card wasn't that, wasn't that great, but the role it played in your deck made your deck so much stronger. So it's not really about uh, the individual card. It's more about, again, help fixing weaknesses, you know, the strengths. Uh, it's all it's all kinds of stuff, but, but in, in short, enough rambling. In short, this card's good because of what it adds to deck, even if it individually it's just a 7-5. But I think it's good either way. Uh, I run two. So the other card I really, really, really enjoy in this deck is Tear of the Tides. This card's phenomenal, and I think it's going to see play a lot in future formats. 
So this isn't playing the deck right now, but it I, I used to go one ship recorder, one tear the tides for similar reasons. Uh, what it adds to the deck, but fearsome's just not that relevant in this format. It's this is much better against mid range decks and mid range decks aren't that important in this format, or aren't, not that important, but they're not that prevalent. Basically, this is an eight cost, and then Sea Monster Allies have fearsome because all your Sea Monsters fearsome when you attack give enemies minus two minus zero this round. That means anything that is um, four attack or less gets shrunk down, and or anything four less attack can't block because they're they're too weak to block fearsome units because everything minus is two. So if something has four attack that can normally block fearsome, when you attack, it minus is two and becomes two attack, and then they, um, they can't block because you have fearsome. So this card's insanely good. I, I would normally run this in other formats. I would, I would really like it. Another cool thing about this card, if you run atrocity in this deck, I'll explain why I prefer like Terror of the Tides if I were to play a card like that. So this card, kill an ally, the damage equal to its power to anything. This is kind of like Nautilus. You use only Nautilus or like any sea creature to... Do big damage, you set the chip and do one. So if you draw this card, it's actually a blank. It doesn't, at the beginning of the game, early game, it's completely dead, you can't use it, and you can't really afford to have a lot of, or really any blanks early game, because your early game's already one of your weaker points of the deck. And if you mill it, you lose one of your win conditions. This is essentially a win condition for one or two. Um, so, you're, so it hurts consistency. It's a, it's a win condition that if you just mill it, you just lose that win condition in your deck, it's just gone. And so you're really only gonna draw it near the end. And, it usually only is working that well if you're already winning. That's not the case all the time, but many times when you're able to put them on atrocity clock, it means you already have like the Nautilus and the Sea Monsters in deep, and you're like gonna win the game anyway. So this, this card's not really, in my opinion, that good in this deck. Um, but if you look at Tear the Tides, here, this is a win condition. Uh, for sure, it lets you can attack for game. Even if they block, they lose everything. But the cool thing here with the, the Nautilus is that if you mill the Terror of the Tides, or taught you mean toss it, the Terror of the Tides, when you play Nautilus, he shuffles all the sea monsters back into your deck. So then you shuffle your win condition back into your deck. So you can just run this as a one of, and it'll always have a win condition for the late game. That's reliable, and you can't just lose. And it's really good in the mirror match. It's just well run a card. The downside is that it does make it that your lure can search a, a card that, if you do run lure, that's really expensive, but you can also just not run lurk in the build. But this format, since Fearsome's not that great, I decided to go with two ship recorder. Um, having one ship as more of a win condition, it's better against control decks, and I, I think you need at least two of a card that's near a win condition. It's not exactly a win condition, it's it's less powerful than Terror of the Tides, because it's just different, and you don't get these right away, but that's I think this is better this format it's kind of like sit through the bulls not the crazy format compared to Genevieve also it's just that fearsome's not crazy good this format mirror inches and they're crazy good but anyways real quick cards I didn't play um, I don't think this card's very good in this deck and the reason why is it really levels up and it's good to help control the mid range or the mid game but the big issue is that to add thresh in your deck you have to cut Maokai or Nautilus and if you're cutting if you're only running two Maokai or two Nautilus your deck is so much weaker like, I mean so much weaker then it would be a three Maokai to be honest. Like people play Thresh in the deck, I I can't I can't believe that. I can't I can't justify it. It's cutting a Maokai is insane. Like even losing the losing the odds of losing max odds of a Maokai on four is just weakening your deck so much. Like Maokai on four is the most powerful parts of your deck along with Nautilus. So you you can't you shouldn't play Thresh. Like there's no way. You rarely level up, and even if it does, you're not even guaranteed to get the one you want, which is Nautilus most of the time. So it's it's not the move. Um, let's see here. Hapless is a good blocker, depends on the format. I mean, this format's actually good for Hapless to be a blocker against, uh, you need the extra protection early game. Even if it doesn't get, like, the good trades, then it's still good. But it can, it can block Legion Sabotar and Icefall Archer and Legion Grenadier and stuff like that. It's a good card right now. Definitely consideration. Um, and then another card, Glimpse Beyond. Uh, I, I just can't really justify playing this card because you're already a low on field control, so it's hard to really just by just picking your cards away unless things are already going well. Higher Gun's extremely good. Um, definitely a card that I would like to fit. I, I, I've tried many different variants out, so this is kind of like a test. Like, there's so many different versions, but this card's very good. When I'm summoning Grant, Strong's Enemy, Vulnerable. They play a weak, you know, I want like a 2-1, and you play this, you get to clear it, so you can clear one of the cards and get a blocker. Clear, it's just in general, this card's just really good, and it, it help, helps stop their early game, and even if you draw late game, it, you can get really good trades with the Sea Monsters. This card's very good, definitely consideration. We have Miscall, Rider and Ally died this round. You can use this on these cards are one of summoned effects, so you get this effect. 
you can get um, Deadly Wonders effect. You can reborn sea monsters if they're destroyed. And this is one stomach too. But again, I feel like um, it's it's another thing that is wishful thinking. It's not something you can just activate on command. And I, now you have to already be winning to use it, but it doesn't help you in bad spots and it's relying on other cards. I don't think it made the 40 cards, but it's a good card. Definitely consideration as well. One card I think is underrated, but just not really a good format is the Beast Below. This is just a 4-4-4-4 four, 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 four with Deep. But that's pretty insane. No, okay, it's not insane, but it's pretty good for a few reasons. One, with uh, it, it's 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 you know it's it's the cheapest sea monster there is. Four is four is the lowest sea monster uh, in the game, so he is comes out early, and if you draw, you can use him in the mid game. It's not even crazy, but but with Lurie's a uh, three mana four four, which is pretty you know that's pretty good. But also with Nautilus, uh, when I level up, or sea monster allies cost four less. The turn you play Nautilus you can play this card which is a lot more hard to defeat like it's a lot more powerful to swing the game in your favor from seven onward like it should make it like so you almost win seven onward for the most part because if you play just nautilus on seven and then you can't play your best and then you pass there's many ways they can deal with it. like they can use a weak card to challenge it and then attack for game and challenge the nautilus away uh, and leaving you open or they can stun the nautilus they can frostbite the nautilus it, it basically gives you only one blocker in general and people can beat that on seven if you're already trying to catch up and then, but with the beast below, you have a, a 13 30 and tough and challenge, a tough and fearsome, but you also have a 7 7. So that's for free. And the rest of the time, you have not to just free 7 7. So that's pretty good. That's pretty fun, interesting. Can search alert, but um, a, bit too, a bit too slow. I think you need to be doing more by then. This card was cool. The deck first came out, I tried it. But Withering Whale, it depends on the format. Good card. Atrocity, I explained. I don't actually believe this. I think this card's not the great in this deck, personally, but it's it's okay. It, there's reasons to run it. Scrapshot, toss three, do something that's interesting. Kill a unit. But anyway, it's good. Let's get in the, oh, Runation. Yeah, uh, it depends on the format again. It's good against mid range, but uh, it's 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 it definitely has its flaws where it's not that good against aggro and control. All right, let's play. Yeah. All right, so up against Scouts, uh, MF Lucian, a deck that I actually made myself. Uh, but this hand's extremely good. So. We keep Judgers, this is the perfect one drop. You want to have it on a one to toss three and be a blocker. Two drop, um, you want to you know, block, toss two, heal. Maokai is amazing. You usually always want to keep Maokai, unless it's against like aggro. Then I guess you, you might mill it depending on the aggro and if you think it'd be pressure too much. So this is a very mill selector here. We can go deep really fast. You might think we should keep Jettison, but I think we should get rid of it because um, we want. It's just really a card you want to keep against control matchups. But you want real cards of substance to deal with their cards while also going deep. Like, these are all perfect. But Jettison is something you'd rather draw into later than have a, a blank to work with, essentially, at the very beginning. Even though it does do something, but it doesn't do something against their third field they're trying to pressure us with. So start with Dredger. You know, it was Lure. That was Salvage. Valkyrie's Dead Bloom. Okay, we'll attack. You probably won't trade here. Yeah. That means he probably has Warshaft or Bright Steel Protector. Either one's not that big a deal. Okay, we drew just in anyway, it's fine. At least we, we drew some sea monsters to work with first. Okay, so he actually has neither. So I'm not really sure. This trade might have been good for him, as bad as it looks. Oh, so he's just gonna miss out on attacking because they're gonna, gonna trade anyway, but I guess they're not gonna trade anyway. Um, pack of this. You actually, it's fine if this card's damaged. Um, it makes it easier to get the effect off with. It's, it, it, this is a fine trade. It, it's not like you wanted damage, I guess, I should say. Okay. So now the, the Fleet Checker can kill this with Misfortune's effect by challenging it without even taking any damage. He's Lucian. Um, I want to be careful here. I'm just going to pass. Because if he loses attack, that's good for us. I don't want to risk putting Maokai out there because he could take it with the Fleet Tracker. And then make it rain to kill it. This this is the this card's essential. Like once you start getting this off, you're in an amazing spot. So let's block for. Don't want it to live or die. I think I want it to live to be another blocker. So how much of that? It's Thirteen. We'll heal two later. Or it'll die here. Hmm. I think we need another blocker. I'm not really pressed for time right now. No, 
Yeah, let's just go like this. Until he loots you later. And it, it will net heal us one damage because um, we took an extra damage by by blocking a two drop instead of a three drop, but it's gonna heal two anyway. And be another blocker. Oh my god, that's alarming. Okay, we can't we can't really do anything about this. So. Which one is he gonna hook though? There's a lot of pressure, but I'm not. That, I mean, it's very good, obviously, but I'm not that torn about it because that could have been a lot more damage later and it used a lot of his mana. So it's not really like the end of the world here. This might be a sad magic turn. Okay, never mind. Well... No, there's no point in sad magic. We're just gonna let it die here. And then we're gonna go to 9. And this goes to 1. Rudy has a fucked off though. That's fine. Okay, we can sad magic to heal this later. This will trade. Uh, we could sad magic here to trade these two, but I don't think it's worth it. That's honestly fine for me. It's not a bad look. We'll, we'll, we'll just save this for when he inevitably tries to kill it with like single combat or, or whatever he's scheming. All right, let's let's play Abyssal Eye. Get the Sapling. The Sapling's big because we can just kill Lucian for free. He has Senna. That means he had more misfortune than Lucian Senna, which is pretty hard to beat. Honestly, we might lose that, but we'll see. Okay. We shoot them. Classic. Of course, I should have figured they have Senna. All right, but we'll still kill Lucian here. We're just have to have to block. Make sure we block the double attacks. We have grass for that too. So he doesn't have another Lucian on top of that. And then that should be our turn. So we have stat magic and grass and all kinds of stuff. We'll be fine. If he develops, which he probably will, then okay. So either if he doesn't, we have grass. And if he does, then it's fine too. Uh, I'm not sure. We, we, we need to block this either way. Uh, it's too risky not to. This doesn't really matter. But we can't, we can't not block that. You, you, you gotta block that. In case he has a, a combat trick to protect this, like let's say he runs Radiant Strike or like Repost, then that's gonna be game. He's gonna get two, two attacks in at five or more attack. Uh, if it's one of those two cards or more, and then we'll lose. But let's continue the milling. If we mill, we're milling two off this, get the sapling and mill three off this. We're getting close to deep. We should be, uh, yeah, okay, so we're. We're at two away now, right? Yeah, so Malkai gets pretty clean working. You also kill a tracker. Radiant Guardian. That's unique. So we can use that any time to, uh, to burst our guys to be stronger. Um, let's save this. Let's not use it immediately because we'll tell him to attack first and think that he's safe to attack. Uh, he's, using his, he's using his pursuits extremely rapidly, but it does let him get that. That's alarming. All right. Things are heating up. So let's let's definitely use this now to um, boost Abyssal Eye to deep with the plus three plus three. And then now we can trade with this. And we'll block this. And then I don't I think we'll just have to take the two here. Mm, yeah. We need the lifesteal, so like what's gonna have to happen is is I'd rather let this go through. And then, and then heal back when we attack. But I think we should kill Malkai or block with Malkai here, though, just because I think that the only way we lose is by damage. So we should be careful. Mm, nah, we won't do that. We'll, we'll we'll heal back later with the dead limb. We're gonna get two. We're not we're not in range of naked rain yet, so we'll be fine. It's a pretty dangerous game, you know. Misfortune level up, double pursue, Lucian Senna, but. We'll be okay. So we'll play this. Try to remove the Radiant Guardian. And then we're gonna get Sapling to kill the Cythria, and we're gonna try attacking the Dead Limb. We're also getting closer to the Maokai level up. So not really like the main thing I'm looking for right now, but if it does happen, if it's on a four turn clock, and he loses a lot of resources from his deck. So this is this is gonna be really important, and we get a trade here. Do anything. We'll save this for when we have like a shipwreck quarter. So there's not really a point to this right now, uh, too much. Gets rid of cards on our deck. You know, it, leaves, it leaves the champions, which is cool, but... We actually might Malkai. We might do it now, just to put him on the clock. Uh, yeah, what's... What's our next turn? So we're gonna go into 8 mana, plus that. The one extra spell, we have 9. Uh, and 9 can do Sap Magic... Plus... Devour... I think Sap Magic might be important for Malkai. 
I don't think we're gonna win by the, the, the clock here. I think we're gonna win by, um... I think we're gonna win by damage, because we had four and I'm at five, it's not close. We do get a round start. Uh, we would've got a, a sapling round start, but we don't need it, so it's okay. We'll go deep here. I mean, not deep, we'll get Malcolm back here. Okay, pretty good. So he's left with four non-champion cards. He doesn't have... So he leveled up his fortune, and if he doesn't have one in hand, that means he, that he doesn't have any more fortunes. So even though he went all the, all the efforts to level it up, it, uh, it, they're gone, so... Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna banish the uh, Cythria, and yeah, he's out of resources. Um, was a bit, a bit scary, but he wasted his resources so fast. He, his rallies could have been much more potent. Like, he used Rally when I had a Sadly on point, and then he also used Rally... My Smurf, hold up. Let's be hype. I don't know what I don't even have. Oh, I have every champ in this account. Yeah, yeah, sweet shards. Okay. So, um... He, he used a Rally... He was really trying to force Misfortune level, but he didn't have to. Like, he used a Rally when we had a Thorny Toad to block with, which was okay, because he had a big field, and Thorny Toad wasn't doing too much. It was just gonna block anyway, but... I, I don't know. I, I think you should have saved his rallies for more potential, and he also used the one to meet the sapling. So I feel like, if I remember correctly, I feel like we were fine. So Teemo Sedge actually it was a, a decent tier two deck class format, but it's a good matchup for us because they put mushrooms on our deck. We we can just toss them, which it means that the mushroom on the card, and we toss it, the mushroom just goes away. So that helps out a lot. Uh, so I'm gonna try and get a dredger. I usually keep this card because it it's just. It's so, you usually want to open with like Dredger, Dead Bloom, Maokai, Thorn Toad type stuff. Like this is good too to help the early game pressure, but this mills and heals you back compared to the other cards we had like Jaw Hunters. Um, I'm just afraid of having too much pressure at the very beginning of the game and we can't come back from it. The Dungeons is nice. It's very good, but I'd prefer this to DR turn 3. And I still want to look for a turn 2 slash Maokai. So we drew Vile Feast. Um, first let's attack to see if we even need to use it. I doubt he trades here, so it's probably gonna go through. Okay, and then we'll, we'll... We'll Vile Feast him on attack, because he can play another team if we do it now, and there's, this deck doesn't really have... Unless we're playing Pseudo, but I don't think it does. It's not gonna have things that could protect him. It's more removal spells. Then it's like removal cells of Sajwani and Timo, the mushroom cards. It's an interesting deck, and they all, they all, the mushrooms proc Sajwani. But yeah, so here we'll Vile Feast here. So in case we did it earlier, you could just play another Timo if you had one. If you use Timo and Sales for Chance, but I don't mind at all. Oh, yeah, they run out of Sajwani? Okay. Okay, it seems I'm, I'm a complete fool then. Because had I known that, what? he probably runs two of Sir of Iron. He already did Timo, so he had two Timo left. Um, I don't know if all of them run X or Iron. I think maybe I made the right play, but in hindsight, maybe it's wrong. But I think I think that was fine. We'll attack with this. It's fine with these trade. We'll heal two. Get rid of this. This this thing's actually kind of a threat. He might even take this, but that'd be. I don't think you should. I think you should trade here or use, use Mystic Shot. That'd be good. Yeah, it's probably Mystic Shot. I get excited. Depending on which one he has. Shot. Yeah. So we don't get any of the heal. He just guy. We don't trade. Um, so now since he only. So the pops go in. Okay, what's up? Alright, alright. Not bad, not bad, not bad. We're good though, we're good though. We're chilling, we're chilling, we're chilling. It's fine, it's no one panic. We are good. Um, we... Okay, wait. So since I drew Mushroom this turn, that counts as the plunder for Shadsboro, it's not bad. Um, but I think my odds of higher of him having Teemo, because either he already played one, they, it's a, they still have she had two Elixir in the deck and two Teemo, and I don't think all of them run Elixir, so... Um, I think Valkyrie's in there was good. He had no mana to save him the turn before, I believe. Or he might have actually had two mana anyway. The turn I was thinking about Bile Feasting, right? Yeah, I think I think, I think think the round two had started, and then I, he could have Iron Elixir there, yeah. Either way, anyways. So, three, three spell mana go over. Uh, every turn if you have it remaining mana, but the fourth one you just lose. So we're gonna use this in here to fix our spell mana. You don't really want to use it ever right away if you if you don't have to, if you have three spell mana here. Because it just reveals a card at your hand. Um, so that, you know they know you have one less card to work with, so they can like calculate their odds easier on playing around certain things, like oh he lose four cards in hand, lower chance of having this, stuff like that. Um, you you reveal that you're going to going to deep at a faster pace, so then they might be like having for it. They're like, oh, well, I thought he was going to go 
I didn't think you could eat deep for this long, so I'm gonna play less aggressive. But if they see you jettison right away, then they're like, oh, he's going deep now. I, I gotta really push what happens. Also, uh, besides that, you can use Jettison as a combat spell. It, it does trigger your deep creatures to have plus three, plus three, so you can use it. Like, a lot of times you want to use it on the turn you play the deep creatures, because if you do, okay, if you do, then they you can win a whole combat so you can say when expect let's say you attack with three sea monsters and you're not deep you have jettison in hand the block you know thinking that they're going to trade or they're going to win the trades whatever it might be and then you use jettison and, and your whole field gets plus three plus three it's like a four demacia for the turn the four demacia the six cost spell that gives things plus three plus three for a turn you can use that like at burst speed for one when you're battling um so here i think we should fix our fix our mana again i do kind of save this for teemo though um Mm, yeah, I guess we'll just pass. I mean, he loses some mana too. Let's hope he doesn't play more. He might play these actually though, because he has two Puff Cat Puddlers. Luckily, we're playing a mill deck, but there are some downsides to it. He can usually I don't like triggering this that much, but he can draw a card here. We need the blockers, and we'll get rid of. Um, it fixed our mana. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, mm, well, but, so the thing is, Valfies doesn't kill Timo anyway now because it's a two-two. So, anyways. Um, what was I don't even know what I'm talking about. There's Timo. Um, this is not looking that good. Oh yeah, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a gift and a curse. The good thing is that if they put puck caps in your deck, you can mill them. But the bad thing is that you have less cards in your deck. That means the puck caps are more condensed. Like we drew three out of fourteen because we don't have any cards left. So the puck caps are all attached to like twenty sixteen cards. Oof. It's it's we're, we're good we're good we're good it's 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 all good it's fine. Oh. Okay. It's fine. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's cool. Like, I'm not even worried. Not one bit. It's fine. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, we're good. Double them, triple them. I don't even. It's, I'm good. Yeah. 78? 70 out of how many? 16. Okay. Um. Ooh. So. Uh, usually you'd want to play this here, or not, I don't know here, but you want to play this before this so it's discounted, like when you play it's discounted, but I think we need to play this here so we can toss these cards out of our deck that have the mushrooms and add two more cards that don't have mushrooms or else we might just die. So I think we should play it safe here instead of sorry. So we had 70 puff caps, now we have 74, we got four out of our deck. I was hoping for more than that, but that's, that's fine. We do add cards in our deck that, um... Are the treasures don't have mushrooms on them? So they're added after the mushrooms. Okay, now they might. It's 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 fine. We're good. It's all good. Don't worry. Just you know, be gentle. This one turn, we can refill our deck by putting sea monsters back in our deck with this effect that don't have mushrooms. It's only half of our remaining lifespan. We're good. All right, so we'll play this. This adds so its effect is that it puts the four, it puts the four the four cost the four power plus sea monsters into our deck. So it actually adds a lot of cards in our deck that don't have. So we I think we just gained what was it? So that was one turn off deep. We I think we had five cards in our deck that um have no mushrooms. Okay, so that's gonna make all of our guys cost zero. That's good. We can always use this if we really need it. We need to care. We honestly might have to use this on Kimo. So he has double mushrooms again. Like that, we're definitely going to lose by mushrooms here. This this isn't... Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll get this, first, let's get this trade. First, let's get this trade. Oh, no. The fruits of conquest. Yes, the fruits. Um, it's, we're good. It's, it's fine. Everything's fine. We're good. <clears throat> nice! I mean, it's calculated. So, anyways, uh, we, we get a keel breaker here. It was added from the Shabbat Quarter after a lot of these mushrooms were put in. Some were put in afterwards, but uh, this one was put in after the huge heap of mushrooms. So, that means that it had no mushrooms on it. So, I don't. Oh, he didn't know we drew this. I, I forgot. Okay, if it was tossed, they, they can see we got to our hand. Okay. So, it kills everything, but these two. Um, the, the scary part is we can easily just draw for turn and die next turn at any point in the game. Okay. We're good. It's winnable. 
winnable. It's winnable. It's winnable. It's winnable. Um, it's, it's winnable. We're good. Um, I think he gets the next action after this, so we can't play Devour before he attacks. But we can block Sejuani and we can Riptide the uh, Tino. I'm just afraid we're gonna die right when we level up. We have 107 pop caps out of 19 cards. So, yeah. What the? Sorry about that. Well fought. Well fought. All right, we should probably pump out some damage here. So this is game on board. So as long as he can't stop this, like he probably freeze our stuff. But if he can't, and we don't die right here. That had none. All right, this is this is a big deal. This is our one chance to win. Um, all right, we open attack. Let's just let's just think while we're here because he might surrender. But uh, if he has like harsh winds or things that could stop. In this in general, we're pretty screwed. One of his cards is from Shared Spoil, so it's a creature. Um, so this could be game. If we develop, you could draw Sejuani, or play Sejuani. Let's see. We can develop two different cards. That's a big deal. Let's say he stops Nautilus. Can we still go for game? Um, we have 10 damage here plus 7. Oh, man. I think we have to go for it. I really do. I don't know if they run Cacosta Palm or it probably it's hard. He probably play harsh wins us. I think we have to go. I think this is our one our one chance to win. Okay. So we weren't killing him no matter what. But we also did chip damage, but it doesn't matter because we're gonna kill him next time. So we have we have two turns to to die to the mushrooms like really easily. Let's see what we get here. I right, really want shipwreck order to put more cards, toss up the mushrooms and put more treasures in our deck that um, aren't don't have any mushrooms on them. Okay, this. He doesn't have board clears. He has Sejuani though, which freezes our whole field, so I might want to keep this in our hand. Okay, it's fine. I might want to keep this in our hand. Mm. I'll see keeps in our hand because if Sejuani freezes our field, we can play this afterwards to do some damage, but we don't want to do that. We don't even, we don't even want to draw a card off this. We're going to have to do this last in the attack if we do use it. We're probably going to die to Mushrooms by, before we can attack again, but we'll see. It's it's fine. We did Riptide shove Nautilus in our deck. I don't think any mushrooms have been added since we did that. Um, because they had the burst speed added before, so we can draw the Riptide champion spell or like the Nautilus that doesn't have the mushrooms on it. But he also could get excited our Nexus for game. Okay, that's an interesting pick. Um, all right. Uh, it's it's just gonna come down to the mushrooms, honestly. We probably lost. Oh my god. We can't. I don't think we can play that. I think we just have to go for it. So. If you were to stop. If you were to kill this or like make it so this actually go through, we do seven, we place, we draw a card and have a mushroom on it, we would lose. So I actually think we just have to develop. Which would put us at this attack for 7, this 7 puts 14, and this attack for 6. And the damage should go before the draw, I believe. Um, this is really risky, but I, I have a feeling we have to do this because of that reasoning. This is just, this is the risk I'm willing to take, I suppose. You could also mix our Nexus for game. This, there's like a million ways we can lose right here. Alright. Okay. Oh my god, we're gonna deck ourselves out. I mean, we're gonna mushroom ourselves. We're gonna self kill. No. Oh, this isn't even game. No. Oh no. Double harsh wins. You hate to see it. Alright, close game. Close, close, close game. Close game. It was a good game. All things considered, it was a good game. It was actually, it was actually pretty fun. Alright, um. I, I do want to end up to win, but I think it's good enough to end it. So let's just let's just keep that. Um, that was pretty fun, actually. But I did I do hope that did sh that was a pretty unique scenario with the deck. Maybe maybe it showed you some high level thinking in the deck, or maybe better with it. Maybe it didn't. I mean, it was just a uh, fiat mushroom fiesta. Just, just 
I don't know if that was like a standard game, but that matchup I usually think it should be good though. Um, I'm not sure now. I, it's, it's outside of hit or miss if, if you have your deck is thinner, so the mushrooms get jam packed into the cards. But also when they're putting the mushrooms in initially, you can just mill them. So it's hit or miss. But that's the video. Uh, I did win a treasure trove or get uh, the plate remake, but I guess for anyone who doesn't play deep or haven't really seen the deep cards that much, I'll just show you one more time. So when someone toss two and shuffle the treasure in your deck, so someone can put these in your deck. We got the one that says uh, deal five to all units. This one also, I went this earlier, but I'll go over it one more time. Summons three, so for five mana, you summon three eight eights, I mean, if you're deep, either five fives with fearsome, but if you're deep, three eight eights with fearsome um, for five mana. And then this one, create five random cards in hand, they cost zero and are fleeting. So that means you, you get this card, and even if you mill it, you get it. Uh, so that's it's a free card just if you just mill it but then you play it for five you get five random cards in the entire game and they all cost zero that turn and that's when they're gone but you play usually always play all five for the most part uh so you can you just can get five it can be anything it can literally be like you could get you could get i mean you could just get one once like you get a one warning shot absorb soul but you can also get like five cards and a lot of them consist of uh you can get like a lageros or a special matron tear i've gotten ship recorder itself uh, in one crazy game with that card. You got Vengeance, stuff like that. But anyways, that'll be good. Uh, that'll be the video. If you have any questions, uh, comment them below and I'll, I'll answer them. Feel free to follow on YouTube. really appreciate the support. And also follow on Twitch if you want to see me play live. Uh, I did hit rank one again so this season. So if you feel like watching high level gameplay or playing just in general uh, just having i also play with fun decks and do like let viewers pick decks and stuff like that so feel free to follow but i appreciate it i'll see you guys later peace